Good day, good day everyone. Uh, we are back again uh, with our next episode in physics and um, we're covering today electricity that is Ohm's law, right? Uh, in our previous lesson we had covered uh, resistors that are in series and today we want to tackle um, electric circuits wherein we've got parallel resistors, right? So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you do the right thing. Just hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you need to get in touch with us, uh, please uh, just make sure that you get in touch with us on our email. That's mlungesi.m.ngosi at gmail.com. My name, dot m for Mary, dot uh, ngosi, my surname, at gmail.com. Otherwise, just throw in a comment and let's get busy. All right, so... We tackle resistors that are in parallel today. So remember, we spoke about a battery, right? So suppose we've got a circuit. Okay, so we're provided with a circuit with a battery there. And we've got resistors that are stacked up like that. Right, so there are some things that I want us to note about these resistors. What do we know about resistors that are in parallel? Okay, so here are a few rules. So number one, parallel resistors, we say that they have the same voltage, okay? So voltage is the same. So if you remember from our previous lesson, uh, we said that with resistors that are in series, remember that it was current that was the same. This time, we know that the voltage on this resistor should be the same as the voltage across that resistor, right? And by the way, even if uh, I make them into one resistor, okay, let me uh, show you that. So even if I take them and make them into one resistor, the same voltage is across that one resistor there. So if I say to you, this has a voltage of V, okay? So it means that the voltage V should be the same voltage, I mean, should be the voltage. Now, if you note there, remember we said voltage with corresponding resistance, isn't it? So we said the voltage V in this case is across the resistor R2. But because R2 is in parallel, okay, with resistor R1, okay, I'll just uh, tell you what I mean by parallel just now, right? It's in parallel with resistor R1. So it means that the voltage across resistor R1, well, guess what? It's also going to be the voltage V, okay? So even if I make those two into one resistor, you remember what... Uh, I did yesterday with resistors in series, right? So in this case, what we simply say is that with R parallel, it simply means also the voltage across R parallel will also be V, right? So in this case, we say that resistors in parallel, same voltage. And then what else do we know? We know that they are current dividers, okay? Right, remember we said current is the rate of flow of charge. It's the flow of electrons, isn't it? So they are current dividers, okay? And by the way, how do they divide that current? They divide current inversely, okay? Right, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So all that it simply means is that the bigger the resistor, the lesser the current that, that moves across it. We'll see that as we explore circuits, right? And then what else do we know? Now, I want you to imagine if we've got a total current that is passing from the battery. So here's our total current that is flowing there. What happens when it gets to this node? Now, what is a node? A node is a point where uh, uh, two or more conductors meet. So can you see? We've got this conductor from the battery meeting there. And then that conductor there as well as that conductor. So we call that a node. So what happens to current when it gets to this point here? So current now divides. So some of the current will go through there and some of the current will go through there, right? So let's call the current passing there as I1 as well as the current passing through uh, I, uh, R2 as I2. So the current divides, right? But what do we know? We know that I1 and I2 should be equal to I total. Of course, if you had more resistors in parallel, so it simply means I1 plus I2 plus I3 and all your resistors in parallel, the current, the sum of the currents across all those resistors would be 
uh, equal to i total so that's i1 plus i2 dot 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 until i n depending on the resistors that you have in parallel right and then um just something for you to note now how do we get the effective resistance in parallel right all we simply say is one over r parallel is always going to be equals to one over r1 plus one over r2 until one over rn depending on how many resistors you have in parallel so in effect this uh, is um, uh, this is how you calculate the effective resistance so if you want to get that resistance there now just something for you to note just remember it's the inverse all right of the parallel resistor that's equal to the sum of the inverses right so in this case uh, one of the most common errors is that people do this r parallel is equals to 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 okay just be careful of this right so this is not to be done please under no circumstances okay right so uh, if you are ready okay i think i'm ready to take on my first circuit just remind remind yourself again so same voltage we know the voltage uh, is the same we know they are current dividers and how do they divide inversely it means the bigger the resistor the smaller the current obviously the opposite is true okay so uh, um, i total meaning that the sum of the currents okay uh, across all your individual resistors will be equal to the total current and then finally uh, we said that the inverse of the resistance will be equals to the sum of the inverses okay so in this case i'm going to tell you some rules now let's start with our first circuit right so we have our first circuit there okay so what we're simply saying is that um so we've got a volt a circuit there uh, we connected a voltmeter across our battery right and they tell us that the reading on v is 24 volts so we know that we are given a voltage value of 24 volts there now we said the first thing that we're always going to do is analyze our circuit isn't it so let's see so we know that this is positive negative so we know that current total current is going to move from the battery now please i want you to note once again we said there's no current that passes through the voltmeter right remember we said it has infinite resistance so now we said okay if you've got total current there so we know the current will also pass across the total current will pass across that emitter a there right and then we get to this node what happens okay so we know there's total current that was passing through there okay so now uh, our current divides so some of the current goes there let's call that i1 and some of the current goes through there let's call that i2 right so in this case i1 is the current that goes across the 18 ohm resistor and then i2 is the current that goes through the 9 ohm resistor but please look at that as well as the uh, the emitter a1 okay note this is a this is a1 right so there are two different emitters right so now let's start with our circuits in parallel now so we know these two should be in parallel why do why do we conclude that because they are current dividers they divided the current okay so now what did they give us they gave us the total voltage now note again we said that the total voltage that is supplied must be the total voltage that is used in our circuit isn't it okay so once we supply a voltage right we must also use it in our circuit so we realize in this case we're given 24 volts it means that 24 volts is going to act all throughout our circuit isn't it right so the first thing that they want is for us to get the value of a the total current okay right so what we're simply going to say is well we've got the total voltage right we want the total current so which resistor do we need we need the effective resistance we need the total resistance in this case and as you know by now right we want to find out how do we get uh, uh, the effective resistance in parallel we say well it's one over r parallel okay which is going to be equal to one over r1 plus one over r2 okay so um 
so we know 1 over r parallel that's 1 over 19 uh, sorry 18 plus 1 over 9 now please i want you to note okay those are the uh, values of our resistors right but now when we add them up right so 1 over r parallel i want you to please note get a value of uh, 1 over 6 now note i didn't say this is the effective resistance remember this is the inverse of the resistance so what must i do it means i must now get the effective resistance so i take the inverse of that it's r parallel so i swap these around so it means i must do the same also on these ones so r parallel is equals to 6 ohms okay um i'm sure some of you have actually seen uh, this before uh, by the way can i just give a warning this will only work by the way uh, if you've got your resistors if you've got only two resistors you just simply say r parallel is equal to product over sum so that's r1 times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 there is a way that you can do it for more resistors but let's keep it to this for now uh, we don't want to make it uh, complicated so uh, that would have been 18 times 6 divided, I mean, sorry, 18 times 9, rather, uh, divided by 18 plus 9, okay? And straight away, you'll get 6 ohms, okay? So you could have done it that way as well. Right, so now, what have we done to our circuit? We've reduced everything, note, okay? So we've taken everything, we've reduced it into just one resistor, and what's the value of that resistance? It's 6 ohms, okay? So in this case, I want you to note, what's the voltage across that 6 ohm resistor, all right? Oh, yeah. So in this case, it's going to be the only voltage that is given in the circuit, which is 24, uh, 24 volts. And now we are using it across our 6 ohm resistor. And it means that the voltage across this guy should also be what? 24 volts okay so we've taken all our resistors we've combined them into one and we've had we have this resistor now please i want you to note you remember we said the effective resistance in parallel right in this case once we've made them into one resistor so what happens we know that the voltage is 24 because that's the only voltage all right so what does that say it means the voltage also across our 9 ohm resistor is what? 24 volts. It means the voltage across our 18 ohm resistor should also be 24. Can you see that? Okay, now we want to find out what is the value of the current. Now we're going to say, okay, so we take I is equals to V over R, right? That's Ohm's law. Uh, for those of you who have not watched, remember uh, we had that triangle okay v i r so this makes things easier for us right we want the current now it's going to be v over r can you see that so i is v over r but which current are we looking for the total current so therefore we're going to take the total resistance as well as the total i mean total voltage as well as total resistance so what is our v total that's going to be 24 divided by our r total that's going to be 6 okay and what do we get for our current okay so we're going to say 24 divided by 6 and i'm quite certain that you are going to get 4 ohms i mean 4 amperes rather okay so current remember is always measured in amperes okay right are we good right so now we're looking for the current a1 so we're done with the total current, so we know 4 amperes of current pass across that resistor there, right? So now we're looking for the next, uh, for the current, all right, that passes through A1. And remember, which current is that? It's the current that passes through the 9 ohm resistor, okay? So how are we going to get that value of current, okay? Well, um, very simple. We're simply going to say to ourselves, okay, um, we know now that resistors in parallel have the same voltage, isn't it? So if the voltage there was 24, oh, uh, 24 volts, 
the voltage across the 9 ohm should be 24 volts. The voltage across the 18, 18 ohm resistor should also be 20, uh, 24 volts, right? And by the way, if you're taking a look at this, you'll notice that there's no other resistor in the circuit. So therefore, the voltage that's provided is actually used across my resistor. So in actual fact, that's why this should be 24 on both. Okay, right. So now, um, just want us to remind ourselves. So we call this I2, or you can just call it A1. That's fine. Okay, so uh, I2, that's going to be V over R. We want the current through the 9 ohm resistor. So what's the voltage across it? You're quite right. It's 24, right? And what's the resistance? It's 9 ohms, right? And in this case, um, we know that's going to be 24 divided by 9. Okay, let's get that. I get a value of 2.67, rounding off, right? So I got it, I get a value of 2.67 amperes. I want you to note, there's something very important that we said. We said more current passes where there's less resistance. Our total current was 4 amperes. And look at this, just which, which resistor is smaller, by the way? It's this 9 ohm resistor, right? And when you note there, the current across the 9 ohm is actually greater uh, in this case, um, uh, if you compare the fact that this is 4 amperes. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. What would be the current across the the 8 ohm resistor, uh, the 18 ohm rather, the 18 ohm resistor? How would we get the current there? I would simply say, well, the current, we called it I1. I know this wasn't part of our questions, but I'm just showing you. So there are two ways in which you can get that current. You can say, well, it's V over R, right? In which case, you know the voltage is the same for resistors in parallel. So that's 24 divided by what's my resistance? My resistance in this case, that's 18. Okay. And what do we get? Okay. You get a value of 1.33 amperes. And you'll note this added to that should give me the total current. Okay. So another way that we could have done that there is to just simply say, I already have I total, isn't it? Okay. So I total is I1 plus I2, okay? Remember, you already knew that your I total value is 4, right? So therefore, okay, I'm just going to write it on this side here. So your I total value was equal to 4, okay? That's I1 plus I2. So that value was 4. And I knew my I2 value or... Um, because we're looking for the I1 value, right? Our I2 was already 2.67, okay? So there it is there. And therefore, it means that taking that into consideration mathematically, so I1 was going to be 1.33 amperes. Now, I want you to please note that there, okay? So that's 1.33. Right, so we're saying in parallel, we know that they are current dividers and therefore they will divide the current in this case, uh, inversely, more current where there is less resistance. Look at this 18 ohm resistor, it only took 1.33, whereas that 9 ohm resistor took 2.67 amperes of current, okay? I hope you've been able to follow, right? Let's take another example that will kind of expand your knowledge a little bit, okay? Right, let's take the circuit. Um, so now we're given the reading on uh, A3. So we're given a circuit, first of all, and they, te they tell us that uh, the reading on A3 uh, is uh, 2 amperes. So first of all, let's analyze our circuit. As I said to you all the time, that's what we're going to do before we do anything else. Now, looking at the circuit, we're going to start from that positive negative side. We're going to say, right, so we know total current moves out there. So the total current is going to pass through the emitter A1. Can you see that now? And then what happens when we get to this node? Well, we know some of the current is going to pass through there. Okay, so we know I total would have gone through that emitter A1. And so we know through this 
uh, some of the current is going to go through there. And now, please, I want you to note, okay, of course, some of the current continues there. And then it further divides, okay? So let's give, okay, so let's say, uh, so some of the current goes there and it branches off into this current here as well as that current there, okay? Right, now, let's say the current passing through the 12 ohm resistor, okay? Um, you know what, maybe just to avoid, let's call it IA, okay? Let's call it IA, or you can call it I12, whatever you want to call it. The current that passes through the 4 ohm resistor, let's call that current IB, okay? And then the current that goes through the 3 ohm resistor, let's call that IC, okay? Now, please, I want you to note in this case, what does that mean? It means that IC is going to be the current that goes through the 3 ohm resistor, but note that as well, it also goes through M meter A3. Can you see that now? Right? So the current IC is the one that goes through the M meter A3. However, now I made a mistake here. Uh, the current there and the current there are two different things, okay? So um, IB is only the current that passes across the 4 ohm resistor, okay? So meaning that uh, when I look at this, so it flows through here. Now, please, I want you to remember, it means that IC will also obviously meet with IB at this node here, and the sum of the two, I want you to note that, right? It's not only going to be current IB here, but it will be IB as well as IC passing through that uh, uh, emitter there, which is uh, A2. We called it A2, right? Right. And uh, obviously, at this point here, the total current, because it will be IC, IB, and IA, meeting at this node and then obviously going back to the battery okay so what does that say about these three resistors well it simply says that they are in parallel why because they divide current okay right now they say to us the first thing that we need to do is find the value of v okay so so that's our external voltage there or our total voltage in this case right so how are we going to do that Right, so we're simply going to say, all right, so um, um, so we want the voltage there. What is the corresponding resistance, okay? Should be the total, right? But do we have everything else about the total? No. So we look at this and say, but where are we given information? They told us A3, this current here that passes only across the 3 ohm resistor, they told us this current is 2 amperes. So the current passing there is 2 amperes. So it tells me that the current passing across the, uh, the, the 3 ohm resistor should be 2 amperes. So is it possible for me to get the voltage there? Absolutely. So I'll let's just call it V parallel, just for argument's sake, right? So V parallel will be equals to IC, right, multiplied by R. Okay, so I'm getting the voltage across this guy. So uh, IC is 2 multiplied by the resistance there, which is 3. And we get 6, MP, um, uh, 6 volts, rather. So we get a voltage of 6 volts. So the voltage, now please, I want you to note, to remember something important we said about resistors in parallel. What did we say? We said the voltage is the same for all of them right so it means the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor because it's in parallel with the 4 the voltage is the same there the voltage is also the same there but ah keep in mind we said even if you take them and make them into one resistor okay right i'm going to draw that circuit here so even if i take them and make them into one resistor where we call that our parallel or the effective parallel resistance, right? In this case, I want you to note something very important about that resistor. 
we said we know the voltage here voltage voltage there right it would be the same voltage right but even if i make it into the same uh, sorry one resistor then it means that the voltage across that one resistor should actually be the voltage across uh, uh, the same voltage as those ones so now note so you've got this resistor connected to your battery do you see all right so now you've got the voltage across this resistor here and note remember the total voltage supplied must be the total that is used so the voltage there is used only across this resistor so it should be the same voltage there are you with me right so we said voltage is the same right so in this case it means that the voltage across all three should be the same as the voltage across this one guy right and therefore should be the same as the voltage that is supplied in our total circuit so in this case all that we're simply saying is that the value of v is also going to be six volts okay right remember that voltage is the same now one thing i i also want you to notice is that once i've broken it down to become this one resistor okay just note this which current will now pass through this r parallel guy right it will be neither one of these currents it will be the total current okay so it means that the total current that passed through that emitter a1 will be the one that now passes across uh, uh, that r parallel that effective parallel resistance okay just keep in mind uh, for our future calculations there all right now so it means that we've already answered the first question what is the voltage v right the voltage there should be the same voltage there 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 because they're all in parallel okay so it means that the voltage across v is six volts okay right so the next question they say well let's calculate the current a1 okay so which current passes on a1 we said it's the total current okay right now ladies and gents two ways in which you can do that you can do this for me you can find out the current we already know current there you can find out the current there and there and take the sum of all of them right alternatively what we can do is we already know the voltage across this one resistor here to be six volts right so now we said which current passes across this resistor here it should be the total current okay so now i can just simply say all right let's find out what r parallel is so again so one over r parallel it's one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 right so uh we've got one over 12 plus one over six uh, one over four rather plus one over three remember this is one over r parallel okay right so let's add all of those up okay so we say 12 inverse plus uh, four um inverse okay so i'm adding all of those up i'm taking the inverse of 12 inverse of four plus uh the inverse of three okay my calculator and i get two over three but remember this is now this what it means is that one over r parallel is two over three right but what do i still need to do i still need to invert that to get r parallel okay so r parallel will be so if i invert the left hand side i will also invert the right hand side so that gives me three over two or you can just simply say one comma five ohms okay uh, one other thing that i want you to notice is that remember all right uh, the effective resistance in parallel should be smaller than my smallest resistor that is in parallel so which is my smallest resistor in parallel it's three right so in this case 1.5 ohms is actually less than three so that tells me that i'm uh, basically on the right track right so now what i'm simply going to do is now i've got the resistance there okay okay so now i'm going to calculate that current there remember we wanted the current that passes there right 
So we're going to say, well, Ohm's law simply says current. So the total current is equals to V total. Now I want you to note V total divided by R total or R effective, right? Or which was R parallel. So we say V total was six and our, okay. Uh, so that's six divided by 1.5. And that should give us 4 MPS. Okay. Uh, ladies and gents, it's just a coincidence between the two circuits, right? Uh, we are in no way saying that you'll get 4 MPS all the time. All right. So, um, and then finally, all right. So that's the current through that. So we know there's 4 MPS of current there. Okay. Right. So now... We want to find out what is the current that passes across A2, okay? Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, okay? So the current there, all right, at this node, we've got two currents. Remember, current can only move in one direction, right? So we've got the current there, and some of the current went across a 4 ohm, but some went across uh, that 3 ohm resistor. So what will I have here? I will have both currents IC and IB passing across that A2 uh, um, uh, value there, right? Uh, emitter there. So now I want to find out what is that, what would be the value of that current? So note, I already know the current that passes across uh, A3, okay? That's 2 MPS. So would it be possible for me to find out the current here? I'm hearing someone saying to me, ah, but I sim I know what the voltage is across there, okay? Right, do we know the voltage there? Yes, we do. And remember we said voltage with its corresponding resistance, right? What's the voltage across uh, all our resistors in parallel? Six volts, six volts, six volts. And in this case, it simply means I can now find out the current IP, right? So what would be my current IP? It would be, um, IB would be my V, okay, over R. Remember, it would be the voltage there would be 6 still because resistors in parallel, voltage is the same. And my resistor there would be 4, right? That's the 4 ohm. And what do I get? 1.5 MPS, okay? Right, ladies and gents, I want us to quickly do something. So this is the answer to question three all right so it means that we've got 1.5 mps okay so now we know the current passing there is 2 mps the current passing there is 1.5 mps okay so we can simply find out okay i know that's not part of our questions but we can also find out what the current is across the 12 ohm resistor and by the way the sum of those currents must give us 4 MPS. Can you see that, right? So it means that I total is equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3, okay? This should be my I total value, okay? We said it's 4, and my I1 value, uh, uh, sorry, that should be IA, IB, and IC, right? So IA, that's what I'm looking for. My IB value is what we found. We said it's 1.5. Okay, one we found in the previous question. And then IC, we said it's 2 MPS, right? So it means that our IA value should be equals to 0 0.5 MPS. Now, I want you to note something very important. We said more current where there is less resistance. Look at that. When you look at the 3 ohm resistor, it took the lion's share of our current. It took 2 MPS right when you look at the 4 ohm it took 1.5 and look at that the biggest resistor took only 0 0.5 mps of current okay right i hope that makes um uh, quite some sense all right yeah let's take uh, the very last question um for resistors in parallel all right and we're going to take this up now uh, obviously we'll see this in the next lesson where we now combine all our resistors right Okay, All right, so let's take the very last one. Um, right, so uh, so we look at the circuit, they say the reading on V1 is 11.2 volts. 
all right so uh, v1 is the voltage there so they're telling us that's 11.2 volts okay so now what we want to find out um is the reading on v now first of all i said the first thing we're going to do is we are going to analyze our circuit right so we know we have we have plus and minus here we know total current is going to pass through a one okay so as a result what happens when we get to this node of course we know that current is going to divide so i1 there and i2 there okay right we said that's i total there all right so okay so what does that tell us it, t it tells us that i1 is the current that passes across uh, the 12 ohm resistor but it will also be the current through the emitter a there can you see right and then it tells us i I2, which is this current here, will pass through the 10 ohm resistor. But I want you to please note, it will also pass through the 14 ohm resistor. Okay. So in this case, what happens here? So what does that tell us? As we analyze our circuit, it tells us that those two resistors must be in series. Why? The same current passes across them. Can you see? So what we can do is that we can add these resistors, okay? So let me just try and make an equivalent circuit there. So I can have 12 ohms there, okay? And then I can have those two in series with one another, okay? Which gives me uh, 10 plus 14 if they're in series. Okay, so if they're in series, that tells me that will be 24 ohms. Okay, sorry about that small space, space there. Right, so it tells me that this is going to be uh, 24 ohms. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's find out what the... So, so uh, in fact, before uh, getting to that part, so that simply tells me that I couldn't have taken 12 volts and just say 12 volts and I mean 12 ohms rather is in parallel with the 10 ohm resistor no all right because then if these two are in parallel then what happens with this one okay uh, how do we include it in the equation right so it tells me that if I've got two resistors that are in series in a line right I need to resolve them first and then you know consider them to be in parallel uh, with the other one okay Right, so in this case, I have 12 ohm in parallel with the 24 ohm resistor, okay? Yeah, um, so we'll keep toggling between these two uh, uh, circuits, right? It's the same thing, remember, uh, but they will serve different functions. So we remember this is I1 here, and we remember this is I2 that is now passing across both of them uh, with a value of 24 ohms, right? So now this tells me, if I want to find the value of V, do you agree with me that if I can find out what the voltage is on either one of the two resistors, right? If I know the voltage across the 24, because they're in parallel, then it simply means I know the voltage across the 12 ohm. But well, guess what? Because there's no other resistor, it tells me that I would know the voltage V, okay? Right, so where do we begin we said we always begin where we've got the most information i say well they've given us the voltage there now please i want you to note we said you use voltage with its corresponding resistor right so corresponding resistance so where is v1 connected across v1 is connected across that 14 ohm resistor can you see so they gave me the value there and I know this voltage, I cannot use it with any other resistor. It is only because, remember, 14 is not in parallel with 12. So I can't say it's the same voltage there. So this voltage is only the voltage across this guy here, right? So can I find out what that, uh, and what the current is that passes through the 14 ohm? Well, I can say, let's find out what current I2 is, okay? Right, so current I2 will be v1 okay divided by 
remember so it's going to be my v1 value right divided by my resistor there which is the 14 ohm so this is going to be 11.2 divided by 14 okay so what do i get for current i2 okay so that's um right so that gives me 0 0.8 mps okay you can try that uh, on your own so that tells me the current that moves across that resistor there uh, those two resistors there or rather let's start here the current that moves across the 14 ohm resistor is 0 0.8 mps but remember it's the same current that passes through the um the the current uh, i mean the volt uh, the the resistance there 10 ohms isn't it and by the way because these are in series we know it will be the same current that passes across when we take them together and make them into one resistor a 24 ohm resistor isn't it so therefore i know if i can get this voltage here and by the way this voltage would not be the same as that voltage it would be the voltage across both of them and because they're in parallel with the 12 ohm it would be the voltage across the 12 and therefore the voltage across uh, the battery there All right so i can say v it will be i2 multiplied by our r series i'll call it i r series when we have added them together right so it will be i2 which is 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.8 sorry there multiplied by my series value okay so 0 0.8 multiplied by that 24 there and i get a value of so multiplied by my 24 ohm resistors okay so i get a value of 19.2 volts okay so it means that the voltage across these two resistors combined is 19.2 oh and by the way uh, since it's 19.2 we already know the voltage of this one 11.2 uh, so that means that the voltage there should be 19.2 um, since we know the voltage across both of them right minus that 11.2 and uh, that should give us the voltage across the 10 ohm only right okay i'm just showing you that so that you just know how to use that in future right okay so i know the voltage across the 24 ohm now i know the voltage across the 12 ohm and now that gives me the voltage across my battery why because that is in parallel okay right so we've answered the first question and then secondly now they say to us we need to find out what that total uh, current is right so they want the reading oh sorry not not the total current rather but the the current the uh, the reading on a right and a is the current that goes through the 12 ohm resistor um all right so now uh let me just write that there okay so now that i want the current that goes through that uh a 12 ohm resistor do i know the voltage there i hear someone say yes 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 it's in parallel all right so that voltage across there okay you said it's the same as the voltage across the 12 ohm so it means that the voltage will say we're looking for the current so i is equals to v over r okay right so we know what the voltage is isn't it so we already said look we know what the voltage is across both of them that's 19.2 resistance is 12 ohms right and what does that give us so that's divided by 12 and that gives us 1.6 mps okay now look once again we've got two resistors 12 ohm and 24 ohm and i noted that the current passing across this bigger one 24 is 0 0.8 okay and by the way the current that's passing across this smaller resistor okay 12 ohm is 1.6 remember we said more current uh, where there is less resistance okay so that tells me that i'm i'm actually on the right track and by the way just note something to note that resistor is twice as small as that resistor okay so that makes the current passing here to be twice as big it's the inverse right so we did say that it um it divides current inversely right and then the last one 
and now let's look for uh, the third question there right uh, so that you can see that clearly right so now we are looking for uh, the uh, reading on a1 right so what is going to be a reading on a1 i'm sure you can already see it of course these two currents put together should give me the total current so i can simply say i total is equals to i1 plus i2 okay so this will give me i1 uh, we said that's 1.6 plus 0 0.8 and so that should give us 2.4 amperes so that is our total current okay um if we wanted to get this to get to find this another way we could say well we could have taken um the 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 total resistance there okay the effective resistance in parallel okay i'm just going to take the shorter one of course when we've got two resistors i can say product over sum right so that's 12 times 24 divided by 12 uh, 12 plus 24 okay and you'll notice in this case uh, we will get um, so we should be able to get eight ohms so it means if i take those two resistors they give me an equi an equivalent or an effective resistance of eight ohms right so that's our r parallel value okay so i get an effective of eight ohms now i want you to look at this right so now that i've got an equivalent of eight ohms in fact let me just draw it here so that you can see it okay so now that i've got an equivalent of eight ohms okay look at this i've got an eight ohm resistor and i know my total voltage should be uh we, we said that gives us 20 uh am i correct sorry 19.2 so that gives us 19.2 volts right so our total is 19.2 our effective resistance is 8 ohms so to get the total current i'll say i total is v external or v total divided by r external or r total in this case i can simply just say this is 19.2 divided by 8 and i can assure you ladies and gents that gives us 2.4 amperes you know the lovely thing about circuits is that it doesn't matter which way you go as long as you do the right thing you'll always get the correct answer okay right and i hope that's been uh, effective um i'll see you guys next time when we now have resistors in a way i kind of introduced resistors that are kind of combined all right but uh, we will be introducing resistors that are combined and thereafter we'll be looking at emf as well as internal resistance otherwise um it's been good right if you have any comments ladies and gents um uh, please just uh, let me know if this lesson has been effective or if you want me to add something else uh, just uh, throw a comment there uh, otherwise from me for now all right um it's goodbye and please don't forget to subscribe shop shop <laughs>